Welcome to the Near East Side. Welcome to your community foundation and welcome to the celebration of philanthropy. These are sobering times, from COVID spikes to continued racism, from climate change to gun violence, from supply chains to workforce, from addictions to addictions, from Haiti to Afghanistan. The challenges and perils abound, and baselines change every day. So you might wonder, why celebrate now? Because even in the face of so much hardship, and so many brutal truths to face and make progress on, there is uplift going on, breaking through to help us, as Barbara Fant once wrote, discover each other's light to permeate our way through the distance. 20 years ago on 9-11, our nation experienced an attack the likes of which was unimaginable. And yet, somehow, grace was found in the form of many acts of kindness, care, and love. By way of honoring that grace in the face of adversity, Columbus Foundation Accord Award winner Shirley Brooks Jones is here to reflect on that time and how she and others responded. Shirley, welcome. Please share with us your story. Thank you, Doug. Two days from now, we'll mark the 20th anniversary of the horror of 9-11 one of the darkest days in the history of our country. And when I think back to 9-11, I think about New York City, I think about Washington, D.C., and I think about the field outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. But I also think about a tiny island sitting in the North Atlantic Ocean, a tiny island that is filled with people who know what the real meaning of philanthropy is. These are people who have so very little, and yet when more than 7,000 of us were diverted to Gander, Newfoundland, those people came forward and they took care of us. We didn't have our luggage, we didn't have anything. We sat aboard our planes for hours. And finally, school bus drivers were on strike. When they found out what had happened, the school bus drivers came from all these little tiny towns and took us to the various little towns where the people took care of us. We were housed in churches and schools and service clubs. And for four days, they cared for us with such love and compassion. It was just unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. It was absolutely beautiful. Then when finally we got back on our planes, we wondered what we could do to thank those people who couldn't afford to do what they had done for all of us. Because they wouldn't take any money from us when we left. They said, no, you would do the same for us. So when we got back on the plane trying to figure out what we could do that wouldn't offend the dignity of those wonderful people, came up with the idea of setting up an endowed scholarship fund to benefit the young people of that area because we'd learned that many of the kids dropped out of school because there were no jobs. So that's what we did. We set up, we decided that we were going to contribute money to set up the scholarship fund. When I came back to Columbus, I, I didn't know really how to do it, Doug. I came to the Columbus Foundation not knowing whether the Columbus Foundation would be willing to do anything outside of the Central Ohio area and you folks embraced this story with open arms. You helped me with the million and one details that I never would have known how to, to handle. And so, as of this, this year, 341 kids from a little area that has fewer than 4,000 population, 341 kids have received the Lewisport Area Flight 15 Scholarship Fund, and they're doing marvelous things. As a matter of fact, one young girl who received the scholarship the first year we presented it in 2002, 
she went on to receive two uh, a master's degrees and her medical degree. And a little over a month ago, she was named the chief of staff of her local hospital. And it makes me feel so happy that these kids are going back to their own communities and they're helping their own communities. So as we approach the 20th anniversary, I can only think good things. And without the help of all of the marvelous men and women of the Columbus Foundation, I wouldn't be standing here with you. I wouldn't be talking about the beauty of 9-11. Out of all of the horror, something absolutely, utterly beautiful happened. Now I have to just, if I can, just one more second. You know me, I talk too much. But the Broadway musical, Come From Away, Many of you have heard about it. If you haven't, it's a marvelous, marvelous musical. It's coming to Columbus as a part of the Broadway series in February. And the person who portrays me in the Broadway musical, I am thrilled to say, and I've met him, he's awesome, absolutely awesome, is James Earl Jones II. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and we have hit it off like you would not believe. So now, that's enough of me. So thank you so very much. My goodness, Shirley, thank you so much. You are grace and love and generosity personified. Thank you. And so we look for ways to love and respect and honor our way through these difficult times like 20 years ago and today and are doing so with the announcement of our two annual awards, the Harrison Sayre Award and the Columbus Foundation Award. It is with great pride that I introduce our governing committee chair, Nancy Kramer, who is joined by the foundation's community council, Steve Moore, to present the Harrison Sayre Award. The Columbus Foundation celebrates the example that Nancy and Tom Lurie represent of great generosity, dedication to faith and family, building a legacy of giving with humility. Congratulations on being named the winners this year, Nancy and Tom. Tom and Nancy Lurie have been longtime supporters of nonprofits in the Columbus community, and I've had the pleasure of working with them for many of those years. They've given their time, talent, and treasure to organizations that support the arts, health, social services, women's issues, and the Jewish faith. And they have dedicated themselves to ensuring that the spirit of generosity moves on to the next generation. Tom and Nancy have been active with the Columbus Cancer Clinic, WOSU, Temporal Israel, Directions for Youth and Families, and the Columbus Museum of Art, among others. In addition to their board service, Nancy was a longtime volunteer tutor at Columbus City Schools, and Tom has served in board roles with leading national institutions serving the decorative arts world. Tom and Nancy are the proud parents of three daughters, Betsy, Karen, and Leslie, in whom they've instilled the values of generosity, conscience, service, and who themselves are making significant contributions across their community. Tom and Nancy, on behalf of the Columbus Foundation, we'd like to extend to you this wonderful award for all the great work you've done and the service you've done in the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure for us to be able to work with you, with all the people here at the Columbus Foundation. We've been fortunate to have been involved when we were a lot younger and I'd say it's going on 20 years now. And you've always given us encouragement and direction, information where maybe we needed it and helped us in any way possible. But besides that, we've derived so much gratification from being a part of the community and hoping that our gifts will make a difference in the world and watching how Columbus has grown and how new nonprofits are forming, and there's so many places to give to in the Columbus Foundation. We're very proud to be a part of that. And I want to thank you, uh, Steve, for for really introducing us to to so many new areas that have needs. We're also so comfortable in in uh, working with the foundation in terms of the assurance you give us. 
um, in terms of, of vetting the uh, various opportunities that you present mm -hmm. and that we're so much more comfortable with the levels that that can lift us to. I'm so pleased that the girls have picked up our, our, uh, our direction uh, and that it's a genuine interest with them to support us and to be creative in their own right in terms of what they feel is important and to go beyond themselves and to look in terms of, of being helpful to the community. And that's very gratifying for a parent. And then our grandchildren are picking up on it and asking the right questions. They're, uh, they're participating and they're, they're, they're aware, which is very gratifying for, for young kids who have a lot of other things on their mind besides charitable giving. But, but that's, that's an element of their being. And all I can add is we're so lucky to be able to see the benefits and to see the community grow, and it brings pleasure to our hearts to be able to work with others who have set such a high bar in the community in giving. So we're very fortunate. And I think the fact, too, that it's introduced us to so many people that are giving, yeah. and, the, and the depth of the direction of the community in terms of supporting such worthwhile causes, very gratifying to us. And now it is my pleasure to introduce my wonderful colleague on the Governing Committee, Marshall Moore, and the Foundation's Matt Martin to present this year's Columbus Foundation Award. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Nancy and Steve. And congratulations to Tom and Nancy Laurie. Well deserved. Pleased to be joining you, Matt in presenting this year's Columbus Foundation Award. The Columbus Foundation Award is given to an organization that has made a significant difference in the quality of life in our community and to the individuals who have shaped those organizations. As the saying goes, the only constant is change. This rings true for us all during these times, but none more than those served by this year's Columbus Foundation Award. This year's winner's mission is to fight poverty, by providing hope, inspiring help, and real opportunities for self-sufficiency. Their work and their leadership couldn't be more timely, especially in the realms of household sustainability, job training, emergency services, and youth services. Yes, Marshall. This organization also has shown the ability to rally when needed most. Theirs was a leading response, meeting the needs of families, needing emergency rent, utility, and mortgage assistance as COVID spread throughout our most vulnerable communities. Much credit for their success in meeting the ever-changing needs of our community goes to the organization's leader, who has been with the organization since 2008. Enjoying great respect from his peers and those he serves, this leader is as collaborative as he is effective and has been a steady hand during unsteady times in a most challenging arena of human need and suffering. So, in tribute to and appreciation for their extraordinary service at these times of change and for the great example of grace and leadership under challenge, we present this year's Columbus Foundation Award to Impact Community Action and its leader, Bo Chilton. Congratulations, Impact, and congratulations, Bo. Thank you, Marcel and Matt, and thank you to the Columbus Foundation. I must give a debt of gratitude to my staff. They've been on the front lines fighting this war on poverty since day one. It's been surreal as people talk about the economy opening back up and going back into the office because we never left. And so it's been their spirit of resiliency and grit and determination uh, that has inspired me. And I must also thank all of our partners. We had over 18 nonprofit partners who assisted us with 
making sure that we met the demands of the needs in the community. And because of our collective efforts, we were able to keep 16,000 people from being evicted, and we've dispersed over $35 million. Just to give context, in two years ago, in 2019, we served over 300 people and spent about 250,000. So to go from that to where we ended up uh, through the coalition efforts has been tremendous. And we couldn't have done it without the support of the Columbus Foundation and all of the philanthropists in this community. We really and truly embrace the idea that we're all in this together. Uh, through those innovative ideas about how we could use the resource in a more flexible way, uh, it enabled us to save a lot of people from being thrown out into the streets uh, at a time when we really needed it because we had this pandemic raging. Uh, health and safety was at the top of mind and people needed to remain in their homes. And we were able to do that thanks to the collective efforts. Uh, so we're grateful for this uh, award and recognition. Um, I thank all of my staff, my board, our partners, the Columbus Foundation, and all of the people in Columbus. When we talk about one Columbus, prosperity for all, to me, those are words to live by. Be they aspirational or not, I believe in them, and I'm gonna to continue to fight and work with our partners to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to thrive in our community. In further appreciation to you and your colleagues, Bo, on behalf of our chairwoman, Nancy Kramer, and our fellow governing committee members and the foundation staff, I am glad to present you with this $50,000 check in support of Impact's work and service to others. Wow, thank you. We are grateful uh, for this and we will put it to good use. You are more than welcome. Congratulations again, Bo, to you and your team. Let's go out and join the others for a final moment together. So the 2021 Celebration of Philanthropy is a wrap. Thank you, Shirley, for your message up front. Congratulations, Tom and Nancy Lurie, for the Harrison Sayre Award, and to Bo and Impact for the incredible work that you're doing in these times for the Columbus Foundation Award, and to Bobby Floyd for adding his artistry to this as well. So with that, I'll hand it to Nancy Kramer, who will take us out as Governing Committee Chair. We are so grateful to all of you for all you do for our community. So please, for the sake of all of us, stay healthy and safe, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, all right.